don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back. Um, I hope everybody had a suitably restful Easter weekend. I know we did. Um, we didn't really do all that much. Uh, and our weekend started on Friday and finished yesterday, which was Tuesday, because yesterday was our 23rd anniversary. And we went out for a beautiful, beautiful um, lunch at one of our local favourite restaurants. And I had a rather lovely time. Um, I had one glass too many of wine, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> it's only once a year. Anyway, so today um, I'm going to create uh, an art journal page in my Dina Wakely multi-surface journal, the big black one, only because it's nearly at its end and I've only got a couple of pages left in it before this journal's complete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick art journal page today um, using some colours that I don't normally put together. Um, so let me turn off my overhead camera and show you what I'm going to create. Okay, so I've zoomed out quite a distance so you can actually see my entire kind of desktop. Um, so this is the spread that I'm going to be using in the journal. I'm using up one of the, the cloth pages. Um, I'll say the cloth, it's the white kind of watercolory cotton rag kind of page. Um, and I'm going to be working on this side. I'll probably create something a bit later on um, on that side. Uh, I'm also going to be using my Nucleus stencil. I hope you can see that okay. Uh, and it's focused okay today because I noticed the last time I did any video in it was slightly mushy and fuzzy but I think you should be able to read that. I can pretty much read that myself so I'm hoping we're in, we're in focus. So the colours that I'm going to be using today are going to be yellow and blue. The colours of spring. Um, as my background. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a clear coat of gesso down and just off to my right here I've got a pot with lots of water in, clean water for a change. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a generous kind of splash of clear gesso only because I'm going to be using um, some resources I haven't had out. I don't think I've actually used them since we've been in the house and that is a fast approach in three years now. Um, we moved into the house um, here in Barnsley on the last day of May 2019. So that was literally just a few months before the quarantine and the pandemic hit. And I don't think I've used these particular resources since we've been in. So it's time I dusted them off and got a little bit of use out of them. Okay, so that's the clear gesso. Obviously, it's clear so you can't see it. I'll give it a quick try and then I'll be right back. Okay, that should do me. So the clear gesso that I've used is the Windsor and Newton clear gesso. So this has, it's really got, um, you can feel it on your hands actually if you just put a bit on it. It does feel quite kind of grainy to the touch. So, okay, um, next then I'm going to start layering my colours. So I've got my Neo Colour 2s. Yeah, I know. Haven't seen these out for a while, have we? Um, so I've got three different colours. I've got yellow, which is that one. I've got uh, yellow, or oh, sorry, lemon yellow, which is obviously a lighter one. And then we've got dark gold, which um, for me is, is a yellow. It's not metallic. Oh, it is metallic. I don't want that one then. No, that's the wrong one. You certainly don't want metallic. That's the one I was after, ochre. So a darker yellow. So what I'm going to do is I've also got uh, one of these Reeves um, water soluble wax ones as well. Unfortunately I've only got a very limited set of these Reeves ones. I don't really have any other colours. Um, I do have some Dina Wakely scribble sticks but I find they're a bit too, um, what's the word, 
they're a bit too solid, they're a bit too scratchy for me. Um, I've also got some oil pastels, but they're not really going to be good for what I want to do today. I do want to smudge and stuff, but not to that extent. Oh, I've just found an orange as well. I might sneak a bit of that in, maybe, possibly, who knows. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start rubbing into the background, just in different areas. Now, the composition that I'm going to build today is mostly going to be bottom left-hand kind of corner. Up here in the top right is going to be where it's kind of most free. That's where the most open space is going to be. Um, although there will be something in it. Um, so the background really wants to be more kind of open up this side than anywhere else. So I'm just going to just scribble these neo colours down. Just going over the top, blending together, not being particularly too careful, just going where the mood takes me. And then we've got the yellow here. Just kind of filling in those gaps a little. And then we've got the ochre, which will come in and just fill in a few of those gaps. Maybe a bit up there, maybe a tiny, tiny bit up there. Okay, so as it is, that looks rubbish. It looks really, really bad. Um, now the thing with the Neo Colour 2s and the, the Reeves watercolour pastels or watercolour crayons is that they react to water. Now you can either grab a paintbrush. Now you can do this, but I always recommend doing it um, with just a damp brush, not with a wet, wet brush, just, just with a damp brush. And then you can activate the colour with the brush. And you get that kind of really nice sort of blendy painterly kind of look to it or you can take a wet wipe uh, a baby wipe and you can just rub which also does the same thing but enables you to control it a bit more Now, of course, we can do this more because we've put the gesso down. I'm just grabbing my brush again. There we go. And I think, actually, I'm getting a better kind of um, release of the colour by using the brush. So I'm going to do with the brush instead. And I'm just going to go over it, just picking up small bits of water, just with the tip of my brush, and then going over. And I'm going to follow the same kind of painterly pattern. You see how that's sort of breaking up now, just starting to kind of blend into that background. And we can go left and right, up and down, grab a bit more water, fill it in. Scrub it, paint with it, move it backwards and forwards. So just release that down at the bottom. And I'm not going for, or I'm not trying to get a kind of even overall pattern. I just want a kind of scrabbled, kind of scrubbed, mottled kind of background. And I think that's exactly what we've got. I'm going to add a little bit more darkness in. And that's the other thing you can do with this. You can just grab your crayon again. There we 
go. And the thing with these is that once they're down, once they're dry, they're permanent. So let me just dry them off. Okay, that's pretty much it. So what I want to do now, just to break up the background a little, is I've got some white gesso. This is indigo blue white gesso. And I'm going to just grab a little bit with a brush. Just create a bit of space over here. A bit too much. And I'll just get in a bit of water on the brush. With a little bit of pink in there now. That's okay, don't mind that. And then I'm just going to break up that background a little bit with some splatters. Now I'm doing the splatters first before I add my main focal point. Of course, where I've splashed myself and everything else. We can just give that a quick clean. <laughs> and once again, I just need to quickly dry that off. There we go. Okay, I've just added on an extra light just to infill in the middle a little bit, just to hopefully get that a bit brighter. Now, the white gesso, because we've used those Neo Colours and the water soluble um, wax crayons, like I said, when they're dry, they're permanent. So that means when you splash over the top with white, they're not going to reactivate again. So you end up being having a white, really kind of opaque -y kind of splash, which is really nice. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back that, um, that stencil. So this is the Nucleus stencil. And I've also got my um, Ranger Tim Holtz Distress Archival Link. So this is the permanent one, this is the, the solvent based one, not the water based ordinary ones in the faded jeans. And I've got uh, a blue, I don't know if you can see that it is actually blue. Um, that I'm gonna just, hopefully these soluble, not soluble ones, these solvent ones um, haven't dried up. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go add a little bit of detail just in the back. I'm just going to lightly go over. Well, the reason I chose this one, because it's fairly kind of sort of mid-century-ish, and you'll see why that's a little bit important in a minute. Now, I know for a fact that no matter what I put on here blue-wise, it's going to go green anyway. So, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for that. <laughs> Let's use this bit down here. I'm just going to go fairly lightly. He says fairly lightly. And then go in really heavy handed. I'll do. Just so you've got a little bit of interest in the background. And then maybe just a little bit just in this side over here. There we go. That'll do. Okay, so what we could also do now is just grab maybe a texture stamp. What have I got over here? Just loosely, right? I've got one that looks like a blueprint. This is in a pile of stuff that I've got over to my to my side, uh, and I've got some jet black stays on. So let's just ink a bit of that up, and then I'm just going to go just with a little bit of detail into that background a little bit. Maybe just so about there. I 
that'll do. Don't want a huge amount. That will do for that. Okay, so that solvent based jet black stays on, that one. We'll just take a few seconds to dry. But I'm just going to give it a bit of a helping hand. That should do me. Okay, so the next thing I've got is this um, Prussian blue neo colour. So, what I'm going to do with this is grab a brush. Now, preferably, I like to do this with a flat headed brush or a filbert. And what I do is I get some water on the brush and I just kind of start to activate the colour on the crayon. Can you see? And then get as much as you can on it and then come over to your page and just that's it just flick it we've got a big blob there look hey, hey. let's do another one see if it will don't think it'll allow me to there's not enough water on it now that's okay Okay, tissue. What I'll see if I can try and do is just to lay a piece of tissue over the top of that, just to see if I can, there we go. We'll just lift a little bit of that off. So we've now got some dark splatters on there. We've also got some lighter splatters on there. We've got some stamping and we've got some stenciling. Okay, that didn't take long. So on the background now, We've got what I like to call the spring colours of blue and yellow. And when you think about the colours of spring, you think about daffodils and your muscari and your crocuses and your um, bluebells and all that kind of stuff, the forsythia that comes out in spring, it's mostly yellow and blues. I know tulips can be any colour, um, but the majority of stuff when it comes out in spring is either shades of yellow and shades of blue. Um, okay so now I'm ready to add my main focal point so and this is what inspired the colours here she is haha <laughs> look at that love it absolutely love it okay so this is from a 1950s um, Lucky Strike cigarette advert um, and she did have a cigarette in her fingers um, which I have digitally removed before printing it out. So what I want to do is I'm going to apply some um, gel medium uh, or matte medium down onto the page, then on the back of her, and I'm going to stick her down on the page just like that. So what I'm going to do just for now is just move her out of the way, create some space on my desktop. Now the matte medium I'm going to use is from a British company called First Edition. Um, this is the matte decoupage. It also comes in gloss, which I bought by mistake a while ago. I thought I picked up the matte. I mean, come on. They're exactly the same apart from that one word. It's annoying. Why don't they just change the colour? And they mix them all up in the shop as well, which was even more annoying. Anyway, enough of my ranting. Um, so I'm going to use this. So let's just... Well, that's if the lid hasn't completely and utterly set on me if it has oh good grief <laughs> there we go oh. complete nine stone weakling anyway <laughs> oh good grief I've gone completely red in the face that took some doing kids it certainly did right so I've cleaned my brush off, so there's no water on it. Let's grab some of that matte medium and then let's get some down. And like I said before, because what we've used is either um, solvent based or acrylic based, kind of permanent when dry, we're going to have no problems with the background or shouldn't have had any problem with the background. See some of that blue from that neo colour that I've just put on has just gone and smeared, which it shouldn't do, which means it's not dry properly. That's the only other reason it could have done that. 
Right. So let's try and lift this up without it drying instantaneously. And let's try and get this down so that it sticks where we want it to go. There we go. And then she should then go down without wrinkling because we've got it on the back and we've also got it on the on the base but we've also got it on the reverse side of the image and I have used um, my laser printer my um, permanent inkjet printer um, is, is broken which is a bit annoying because that has the the Dura bright ink which is also water stable so you can do this sort of thing with your inkjet prints without it running but hey ho right I think that's probably going to be about it so she's had a good good brush over with the medium so let's just get her dry Okay, so happy with that. I'm going to put that away because even though it says that it's matte, it has actually given it a little bit of a shine, which is not really what I wanted. I just wish these companies, when they say things are matte, they actually say they're matte, they actually are matte. Um, Mod Podge is the same, the matte one isn't. It's got like a satin sheen on it, which is really annoying. Um, the one uh, for paper, the one that had a like a blue label on it, that is matte, but it's like Rocky and Arse Duda here in the UK, you just can't get it. Okay, so there's my image all down, lovely. So the quote that I've got, I've already printed out onto some paper um, and I'm going to glue that down. And then let's see how these are going to work now. I sincerely hope so. So, there we go. And this is just on some white bits of paper. So, I'm using just sort of like clear spirit glue. Nothing startling. Um, I like to use a spirit glue because it doesn't tend to buckle your paper like say school glue does or PVA. So I'm going to put that across the top there. And the next one. And then my next line is going to go there. And I couldn't find the last line then. Right, but here it is. Now then, let's just make that a bit smaller. I'll just trim off the bottom a little bit on that one it's just a bit uneven there we go okay maybe a bit more at that end because I've just put my finger in that bit just go in there like so 
So like I said, composition kind of comes that way across the page. There we go, so we'll give that a second or two to grab and stick and then I can come back in and we can add our final kind of bits to the page. Okay, so they're pretty much dry on there now. So I've just brought in um, a gel pen. So this is a Uniball gel grip from the Mitsubishi, the Mitsubishi Pencil Co. Um, I can't see if it says if there's a particular nib size on it. Anyway, it's one of those ones you can just pick up pretty much in all supermarkets, that kind of thing. But I find it, it's got a really nice kind of precision um, end to it. And it will write on pretty much any surface, just like the food, is it food? I always say food ball, but I always get put. Uh, picked up, but I don't pronounce it properly. Food A, food A ball. I'll just outline our boxes. And then if we want to, we can also just add a little bit of <laughs> I haven't done that for a while either. So because we've got dark in here as well with our eyes and her the collar of her blouse, which is underneath her a sweater. So the black isn't kind of lost. And we've also got those dark splatters in the background as well. But if you wanted to, you could go around this and um, create an outline on her if you wanted to. I'm not going to, but I will add just a little bit of um, Stabilo All watercolour pencil just to kind of create a little bit of a shadow just under her arms and down her body there just to kind of give it a little bit of something down there and what I need to do is just get a very very small brush preferably not one that's been standing in water for two weeks that should do and it's just barely damp and all I'm going to do is just kind of activate it just to create that little black shadow. I'm just evening it out as I'm going along. I can just go back, just dry the brush off. on my wet wipe and then I can just blend out the shadow where I think it's maybe a bit too dark let's go back in just take a little bit of it off Now this would be definitely a finishing touch because this watercolour, um, the Stabilo All Pencil, is quite sensitive to water. So you do need to do it 
quite gently and in very very small amounts a little goes a very very long way and to some degree you can push it and manoeuvre it so all I'm doing is just using a damp brush not even wet just to kind of blend it just gently just removing any kind of excess because we've used the matte medium on top of the actual focal point if we get any of it onto it we can just wipe it off we just remove it there we go I think there might be just a little bit too much on that finger over there so I'm just going to blend that out if I can I'm happy with that I'm happy with that so there we go so that is my art journal page for today I don't know what I did with my pen now I'll just put it back up somewhere else oh dear I put them back in my pen pot and they just vanish they disappear into a different dimension doesn't matter which pen pot I put it in there we go Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sign this and put today's date, which is the 20th, 20th of the 4th, 22. And that is my app journal page for today. And again, looking at the quote, you're allowed to scream, you're allowed to cry, but don't or do not give up. The irony isn't all the, <laughs> I'll say the irony is not lost on me. Um, the fact that she's wearing blue and yellow, like the flat, the colours of a certain flag, isn't lost on me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page today. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.